Welcome, everybody, to the Old Time Boxing Show on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. I am your host for the Old Time Boxing Show, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I'd like to welcome in the resident boxing historian for the GruelingTruth.com, Christopher Shelton. How you doing, Christopher? I'm doing good, Mike. Uh, I know you're a little bit ill, so uh, uh, I'm going to try to have that extra energy so the energy goes great. Oh, I'm ill like Run DMC used to be, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <looking forward> to <laughs> All right, today we're going to look back at the career of another heavyweight from the 70s, which we looked at Leon Spinks last time, which would have been a heavyweight 70s and in the 80s. Today we've got Ken Norton, Chris, and Ken Norton's an interesting guy, was the, what, the second man to beat Muhammad Ali, and he had a career that I think is really underrated. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really uh, interesting career because I get to you know, do these things from a the perspective of a fan, and then as a person who's a little bit distant. And I guess the, the the interesting thing, looking back on it now, is just uh, one. He's a little bit older than I could sort of remember as he's sort of moving through his process. He was never really that young, you know, that the that the main audience got to see him, uh, and that he grew as he as he got older, a little bit like Dean Chance, the pitcher or something. And that uh, he's a better defensive fighter than I remember him. Um, so uh, yeah, great athlete, looked like a chiseled athlete as. His son's right now the Seattle uh, defensive coordinator for the Seahawks. Uh, real smart guy, Norton, uh, articulate. So uh, it, it's fun and interesting. He's a different kind of guy, the way he boxes, the way he goes through life. And, uh, and I'm glad we're doing him. Yeah. I mean, he was an actor in the movie Mandingo. His son, Ken Norton Jr., as you said, defensive coordinator now, but was a very good linebacker with the 49ers and I think the Cowboys. And yeah, Norton to also. Down the Super Bowl. Yeah, and yeah. Norton was a great athlete also, and that was in Jacksonville, Illinois. He was selected to the All-State football team on defense as a senior. His track coach entered him in eight events, and he placed first in seven, which resulted in the Ken Norton rule, which limits participation of an athlete to a maximum of four track and field events. <coughs> I didn't but, know that, but actually yeah. that doesn't surprise me about Norton because one thing about Norton is he always <laughs> at least looked like he was in shape when he went into the ring. Um, um, he's glutton for punishment, but he was ready to go, at least oh, physically. Yeah. And he was an outstanding athlete, enlisted in the Marines in 1963, won three All-Marine heavyweight titles, won a Pan Am gold, um, a, a, turned pro in 67 following the AAU finals. Yeah, you know, I'm glad we're doing our Marines here. You know, a three-time uh, <laughs> Marine heavyweight uh, champion, and uh, some say the best Marine to ever, you know, uh, reach the heavyweights. Now I'm not sure about that because there's some other good heavyweights, including Tunney and stuff like that. But uh, but he certainly uh, yeah, but um, Tunney is a heavyweight. I don't know, even though he beat Dempsey, that's about the only thing he did at heavyweight. Well, he's like 75 and one, and, uh, and he avenged the one loss, and it's a great, 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 you know, sort of light heavyweight, heavyweight. You know, he's a great boxer in general. So I can understand if you're just saying, well, Norton was a pure heavyweight, while Tony had, you know, two or three good bouts, and, and a couple of them against a guy who's probably past his prime or not, you know, not quite as in the same motivation range and stuff. So yeah, I can understand, uh, you know, maybe putting Norton ahead of Tony at least as just a pure heavyweight. Um, uh, as a former Marine. Well, another heavyweight who was in the Marines about the same time, actually a few years after, would have been Mike Weaver, who was also, he didn't start boxing until the Marines, and he had a really nice career. Yeah, Leon Spinks, too. Yeah, I love Mike Weaver. You know, uh, Mike Weaver had that great first early fight against Larry Holmes, and when I alt, uh, you know, knocked Holmes down and just ran out of gas around the 12th round or something, and then uh, fought John Tate, and the, who we always say, we're not really sure he was ever heavyweight champion, but nonetheless, uh, Tate had him going after 14 rounds and two minutes of the last one, winning this thing, and Mike Weaver knocks him out. I just remember watching that bout live, and I was like, oh, my God. Um, I guess the Yogi Berra line, it ain't over till it's over. So Mike Weaver, yeah, another one of my uh, – Faves when I watch that boxing stuff. Yeah, and when you look at Norton's career, started off with the typical 15 or 20 guys that weren't that good, beats them all up, and then he fights Jose Luis Garcia, who was only a 188-pound heavyweight. He was a 5-1 to one underdog, and he knocked out the previously unbeaten Ken Norton in the eighth round. Yeah, it must have been, uh, you know, I, I can't actually see it if I had to read the newspaper clippings, but I get to see, you know, the second time around, at least I get to see Garcia fight, and he is a hard puncher, and I guess Norton, I mean, just the, sometimes maybe the success gets to you or something, and Norton is a guy that likes to stalk forward and move forward, he, he did that throughout his career, and um, maybe, you know, you've never lost, I'm not sure he ever touched the canvas, 
uh, you get just uh, you know you you lose perspective to a certain degree, and uh, Garcia was the wrong guy and knocked him out. And, and unfortunately, the way boxing works, you know, these things should be, you know, you should be able to lose in sports. You, you, nobody expects you to, in football to go undefeated the whole way. You know, you're supposed to lo- lose, learn something from it, and grow. But in boxing, just that first loss hurts your record, and somehow you're a bum or, you know, it, 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 it's unfortunate because probably Norton very much took that as a learning experience. Yeah, and I remember reading a book called Going to Distance, which was Ken Norton's autobiography, and he stated that after the defeat by Garcia, he was given a book that changed his life, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and he went on a 14-fight winning streak that lasted over three years after that. I don't know if that's what it is or what the big thing was or not, but he says it was, so we got to believe him on that. Well, I've had a hired hypnotist. I mean, I like the idea that he... (laughs) He, he used his mental faculty, uh, you know, as, a, as an approach to to sort of have him prepared when he goes into the ring. He always he, he's due to boxing his chest. It's, it's mental chess with violence. But you know, you're going to do something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to see what you're doing. You're going to try to see what I'm doing. I'm going to try to trick you. You're going to try to trick me. Uh, he liked the whole thinking aspect of it. And yes, he, I guess I, I read about the one book uh, and uh, you know, the positive energy and the hypnotist. I, I gather was he was saying so it didn't give him too much confidence. He said he was already confident because um, I think a hypnotist would give you confidence, but he said I already have confidence, but I don't want to be too confident when I go in the ring. I want to be steady. I want to be um, on point when I when I face an opponent. Yeah, and that win streak leading up to Muhammad Ali wasn't against the greatest of competition. He did beat Jack O'Halloran, who was a solid heavyweight back in the day by unanimous decision. Um, beat Henry Clark, and then he fights Ali in San Diego at the sports arena, March 31st, 1973. And the thing that struck me about these fights, especially the first two, was just how great of fights they were. And Ali was a 5-1 to one favorite. He suffered a broken jaw, or he claims early in the fight. And it was one of the biggest upsets in heavyweight history, I think. Yeah, Norton was predicted to sort of do nothing, which is sort of surprising with this 27-1 record, you know, the great success in the Marines. Uh, the first time he had at least a name where he got to sort of be on the national stage was against Henry Clark. His sparring partner was Joe Frazier. Apparently he was friends with Joe Frazier. So it was it was sort of like he's, say, he's taking on Frazier's sparring partner who has this puffed-up record. But at least when you look at Norton, he sure didn't look puffed up, you know, and then the first round he already looked good at he looked good from Ali right away. There was never a moment where he looked awkward against Ali. Ali instantly looked awkward against him. And then the the legend and, and there's an awful lot of truth to it, even though Norton himself disputed it in the second round, I guess Ali was talking, that all you got, that sort of stuff and Norton uh uh broke his jaw. Um, but uh, Norton tried to say claim later that it actually happened later in the fight. But there's no doubt when you're watching that first fight something is wrong with Muhammad Ali Really early on, he's protecting his mouth. Um, you can see he's protecting his mouth. He's he's not doing it much offense because he's protecting his mouth. So clearly he was injured, just like uh, Ali said he was. And uh, in the legend, the second round, uh, Norton broke his jaw. And uh, it's crazy that Muhammad Ali would, would fight ten more rounds with a broken jaw. I mean, I can't even imagine what kind of pain that must be like. That must be some sort of you're a, you're the greatest. You're the greatest. You're a masochist. I mean, who takes that kind of pain? But Muhammad Ali just he wasn't going to go down. He wasn't going to complain. But he also couldn't he couldn't do much in the way of offense against Norton, and he had to protect his mouth uh, against those punches. Yeah, but I think this the second fight, and they had an immediate rematch. Even though Norton didn't win the fight, it, it was a close fight, great fight again, and I think it proved that the first fight. Broken jaw or not, was it a fluke that Norton was always going to give Ali trouble? Oh, absolutely, because this time around, Ali really has no excuses as far as, you know, underpreparing. And Ali was bouncing around on the right away from the first round. You know, he looked like a different Muhammad Ali. He, he looked so good in the first round, uh, you could almost anticipate, okay, this thing's going to be very different than the first fight. But it didn't take long before um, Ali's tactics just weren't doing much against uh, Norton. And Norton's awkwardness would keep going forward um, and just sort of keeping that, that arm up to sort of deflect things that uh, Ali was having trouble with his style against Norton. And, again, it's a very close fight. And um, 
um, everybody everybody hates a draw, and so uh, you had to give it to somebody. Um, and um, I guess it's okay. This is a very close <laughs> call that went Ollie's way. It didn't affect Norton. He, he received a title opportunity, which he was going to receive, win or lose, as long as it was a good fight, and it was a good fight. Yeah, and next up, even though he lost, he gets a title shot against heavyweight champion George Foreman, which was a mismatch. Foreman was a 3-1 to one favorite. They fought in Venezuela in front of a crowd of 9,000 people, and this fight was over probably pretty much when it was signed, Chris. Yeah, this was George Foreman at his, his, his most amazing <laughs> best, the greatest puncher in boxing history, uh, undefeated. Uh, nobody had gone you know, past uh, two rounds, and neither did Norton. And um, uh, Foreman not only beat you up you know, just doing his normal thing, but he was also a little bit of a, a dirty fighter and such as he – uh, he joked about it. He said, I was, he said, when I walked in the ring against uh, Joe Frazier and Ken Norton, I was afraid of these guys, you know. So when I knocked Ken Norton down, I hit him while he's on the ground because I didn't want the guy getting up. He might hit me. So he makes jokes about it. At the same time, Norton, you know, that old bastard. But, uh, but Foreman just beat the shit out of him, you know. That was Foreman at his best. And, and yeah, if, uh, Muhammad Ali's talking like, oh, what he's going to do to George Foreman. You're like, George Foreman's going to kill Muhammad Ali when they face each other because this guy's invincible. And, and the way he beat up Norton and after beating up Frazier – um, uh, George Foreman was, was it, the number one heavyweight, and Ken Norton was, you know, uh, a pretty good second-tier heavyweight at that point. But um, probably that's what it seemed like would be about, about as far as he was going to go, unless Ali, yeah, right, going to win the crown again. That's not happening. Yeah, and the thing is, Foreman did the same thing to Frazier, so it's not really a knock on Norton. Um, didn't you go to 1975? He beats up an old, worn-out Jerry Quarry. And then he gets a rematch against Jose Luis Garcia in St. Paul where he knocks Garcia out and was extremely impressive in that fight. He was, and he also, you know, he was cautious, you know, in the beginning. He 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 respected the punching power of, of Garcia, and then he just started maneuvering it very quickly in his, his way. And uh, and Garcia was, was completely outclassed already by the third round and uh, beat up by the fourth round, knocked out in the fifth round. And Norm was having a streak, you know, took out Corey in the fifth round. Because uh, Corey was pounding some – Corey was hitting some, you know, bombs, if nothing else. Um, but Norton could take a punch, throw a punch, pretty good defense, especially against these offensive guys. He was a better defensive guy than some of these guys. And uh, he was willing to exchange punches and his usual style of stock forward. And if the guy wants to lean against the ropes, he'll sort of pound at the body. Um, and it's just very hard to land clean against his uh, face with, a, with that arm sort of always in the way. Yeah, and then he beats Pedro Lavelle, Ron Stander. Then the third fight with Ali at, Ma- or at Yankee Stadium. Who do you have winning that one, Chris? Uh, I, I've watched it so many times and gone back and forth. I don't think there's any doubts my t- this time around. Uh, I, I have to give it to Ken Norton. Um, I've tried sometimes to watch it and really try to give Ali just these nuances. But um, Norton's, I think he's pretty well almost dominating the fight. Ali's just having trouble what to do. The rope-a-dope is really annoying against Norton. He's, I, I will give Ollie credit for this. It's kind of really crazy at, at this point in Ollie's career if, if people haven't followed the whole evolution. He was just a completely different fighter against, this time against Ken Norton. He was flat-footed. He decided he was, was going to throw Norton off by sort of you know, punching or sort of around him while, while moving only a little bit back. No dancing for the most part. Wouldn't sit down on the stool between rounds. Neither would Norton. Uh, it was a highly emotional fight. But uh, Ali certainly fought different than the first two fights against Norton. Uh, and at, at this point, you've got to uh, commend him for fighting. We're saying, you know, you should have retired because by now, you know, after Foreman and then Frazier for the third time. Um, Norton's, Norton, I mean, uh, Ali's used to these big fights, but I think he's been through almost too many of them. Well, for Norton, this is it. Norton trained his whole life for this moment. Norton was ready. Norton was ready for this third fight with Ali. He put everything into it like it was the biggest thing on earth. Well, for Ali... It's another big spotlight, but there was a spotlight before that, and there's going to be another spotlight. And um, I think, you know, especially when you hear the, the announcers and the way the judges were ruling, the, you know, they think it was a disgrace to boxing. And actually in Phoenix, I remember being so upset about the outcome, um, and so were so many people that I think a couple of days later in Phoenix, they showed the fight again with just locals watching it, and everyone uh, said they thought Ken Norton won overwhelming. So <laughs> – it was actually sort of a win for Norton in the sense that he, in many ways, was referred to as the uncrowned champion. Now, unfortunately, the uncrowned champion means Muhammad Ali's champion. That's, somebody had to be the champion. Muhammad Ali's a champion. But it did hold Norton together through, through the end of 76, through all of 77, as the guy that was really the best heavyweight um, 
possibly and robbed a little bit. And so uh, he had that sort of fame now as the uncrowned champion. I think the fight was close enough that it wasn't a robbery. I think Norton yeah, won the I'm, fight. I know what you mean. Fight. You want to take was... it away from Muhammad Ali a little clearer. And quite frankly, Norton started uh, – did, did not have a great 15th round. And the 15th round is when you really got to put it together, and he did not have a great 15th round. And so that's why sometimes I've watched the fight and it said, you know, I think I give it to Ali. But this time around, I, I was saying, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, I think Norton... eight seven either way. And the thing is this, that 15th round I think was the difference in the fight because two of the judges had to fight 8-7. to seven. And the other one, Arthur McKinney, the referee, had it 8-6-1. Yeah, and, and and by now Norton knows that's all he's around. He knows what all he knows what all he's going to do, and he still looked like he was. I wouldn't say playing, but that Norton's emotions were maybe getting the best to him. You know, it's, I think after the end of the, I don't know, the eighth, ninth, tenth round or something like that, he just after the, he hit Ali after the bell and then yelled at you, "Fuck you," you know, and he was you know really out of control a little bit. I think even Ali was sort of wondered what was what was going through Norton's mind, but then he started trying to trying to uh, rope a dope a little bit, sort of playing with Ali a little bit. And, and you can't play in that situation. Some people can't. Ali can play. It helps him to play. Sugar Ray Leonard can play. Norton's not a player. He, he needs to go in there and fight and just be Norton. And that 15th round, he needs to go in there just like he did in the first fight and just keep wailing away, throwing whatever you got. Uh, don't play with Ali. And, um, and I think Norton screwed up, you know, lost the 15th round and – if it, um, I think I, I still think I would give Norton the edge, but certainly I would not give him the edge in the 15th round. He lost the 15th round. It was that was high profile, and um, he hates to take away Muhammad Ali's title when Ali wasn't knocked down. It wasn't absolutely a clear victory. So um, there you go. Ali got a, an unpopular victory. Norton was the uncrowned champion, and a lot of unhappy boxing fans. Yeah, and then next up. Dwayne Bobbick, who I believe at the time was undefeated. He had yeah. beaten Larry Holmes in the amateurs, had lost, Amazing. been knocked out by Taylor Fio Stevenson, I believe, in the Olympics. And this was a beatdown. I mean, Norton came out and just wrecked him in like 58 seconds. Really, it was kind of similar to the way Cooney wrecked Norton a few years later. Uh, it, it did, and it, and at least the sort of high profile, you know, uh, of Norton as being the the other one besides Muhammad Ali, because I remember Saturday Night Live showed the entire fight, well, all 58 seconds of it in its entirety during its weekend update segment, sort of making fun of uh, of Bobby, but uh, but still, you know, Saturday Night Live showing the entire fight again. Um, Norton was a star as the, you know, the uncrowned champion kind of guy, and really beat up a, a, this huge looking guy who no one thought was really all that serious. And then, unfortunately, when you get knocked out in 58 you know, seconds or whatever it is, people say, see, you're right, he wasn't serious. But still, that's, that was Norton, uh, devastating and, and looking for his opening and gets a guy who wasn't used to somebody that skilled. He just wasn't used to somebody who, you know, if you're a little bit careless, Norton's going to wait and looking for it. And, man, he, once he hit Bobak, Bobak was, was in another planet. Uh, and then Norton, always a great you know finisher attacker, just started just you know pummeling him until this thing was uh, over quickly. All right, then we have the what I think was a bigger disgrace decision wise was him and Jimmy Young. I thought Jimmy Young beat him, and the thing that really disturbed me is when you go back and look at the cards, you've got guys. I think it was Raymond Baldiero who called six rounds even. Jim Rondeau called five rounds even, but Art Lurie just had one scored even and had, you know, Young winning the fight easily. After the fight, referee Carlos Padilla said, if I had a vote, I would have voted for Young. He clearly won the fight to me. This was a fight that was considered a WBC heavyweight title eliminator. What was your take on this? And the other thing, this was a damn good fight. It was a damn good fight, and I, shouldn't, and I think actually for anybody who's just interested in, in sort of Boxing, judging, you know, just on your own as a fan, it's a terrific one to watch because the, the styles and the tactics are different, and it's really kind of difficult to judge each round individually. Um, you sort of have an ebb and flow on this one, but it is very close. And, um, you know, I suppose because, uh, you know, I'm a Norton fan stuff, I, I, I'd want to give it to Norton, but I could see this going to Jimmy Young. And Jimmy Young, you know, quite frankly, had his own – you know, argument for the uncrowned this or that, though he had taken a loss after Ali, but, but he looked like he beat Muhammad Ali. He had a great fight against George Foreman, defeated him, knocked George Foreman down, last person to knock George Foreman down, really impressive fight. And then against Norton, um, Young looked a little bit different. 
uh, but still boxing and 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 also really trying to throw Norton off a little bit from his style. And I think he had Norton off enough that uh, Norton sort of came on at the end. Um, again, another one of these really close decisions and uh, went Norton's way. Um, I, I guess somehow in the sort of fairness of things, I don't know. Uh, maybe life isn't fair, but but I could see uh, Jimmy Young being pretty disappointed. In fact, Muhammad Ali. We interviewed Young and said, "You know, I can see you're really hurt. You don't have to do this anymore. I don't like I don't like doing this when a guy's this upset. You know, I'll let's just go ahead and end the interview." So um, yeah, I can. Jimmy Young it. was never the same after that fight either. No, he wasn't. Nope, nope. He wasn't really the same <laughs> before Ali or after that. He had just a quick. He had a small run. When Jimmy Young had that run, he was a hell of a heavyweight and, and maybe you know got robbed more than once uh, for what what should be a title. But again, boxing. Uh, isn't always fair, and it's not always fair to Norton. It's not always fair to Young. It's not always fair to us. It's not always fair to life. But it it, it is it, what it is. And Norton uh, was given a very close split decision. That if um, I can't really argue for the people who think Jimmy Young won, I almost think he sort of did too. But I, I was I was rooting for Norton and and still sort of thinking of that robbery against Ali. But Young was robbed against Ali. You know that's life, uh, unfortunately, and that's boxing. All right. Then he fights Larry Holmes, and of course the story is. Leon Spinks and Muhammad Ali were fighting for, I think, the WBA title, and the winner was supposed to fight Ken Norton, and they were supposed to sign the fight against him by April the 7th, I believe it was. And, of course, Spinks upset Ali and decided to give Ali an immediate rematch, which I don't think anybody should have had a problem with. But the WBC did, so they stripped Ali, and they set up Holmes against Norton for the heavyweight championship. Um... Uh, to me, this is one of the. This has got to be a top ten fight of all time. It is, and 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 it's also just to to you know, to, to clarify slightly. Ali had been ordered uh, uh, before he fought Ernie Shavers uh, to fight Ken Norton again uh, because Norton was their number one. Norton was always hung around as the number one contender for several you know years, uh, but uh, he he didn't fight him. He fought Ernie Shavers, who people did not think was. Was worthy, though Ernie Shavers proved he was worthy. But going at the moment, people didn't think so. And then uh, uh, Ali decided to face Leon Spinks instead of Norton for a fourth time. That really seemed unfair because now Ali had his time to pick another opponent, and it just seemed like Norton was was being robbed as his number one contender. And then uh, Spinks pulled the offset. And so now you're in an awkward situation because now Spinks is ordered to fight Norton, and really Spinks should be allowed to pick his first opponent. I know it's sort of unfair that Norton's been sort of hung to try, but Ali doesn't want to fight him for a fourth time. Well, Spinks and is so, going to make a lot more money fighting Ali, so you can't hold it against him. Well, that's true. And, but, but anyway, the WBC uh, stripped Leon Spinks, and they called Ken Norton their heavyweight champion. The WBC, um, I think it's, it's fair. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of, again, holding back to the Ali. So it is a championship fight. If nothing else, uh, uh, Larry Holmes versus Ken Norton is one of the top ten heavyweight fights of all time. And um, they called Ken Norton the champion. And certainly after Larry Holmes won a fantastic fight, then you had to view Larry Holmes as, as a champion, too. Nuh-uh. And a uh, terrific I didn't. for all. Well, I know you didn't, but uh, they, that's what they were. Uh, but but he was. He was at this point. Um, that was a, a hell of a. I mean, you can't watch Holmes and Norton and Spinks Ali too and think that these fights are equals in any sort of way. I mean, it doesn't matter. Ali, Ali, Ali beat the man, and Ali oh, yeah, it was a, a, a fun fight to watch, an exciting fight. But you look at Norton and Holmes, and you say these are the two best. Uh, heavyweights. Um, there's just no doubt. The, yeah, but I'll the, tell you the, what. I, I think this, you know, with the quick knockout to Shavers, like a year later, <coughs> and the quick knockout to Cooney, if you watch Norton in his career outside of the Foreman fight, it wasn't like he was getting starched by everybody. And people always say that he couldn't take a punch, couldn't fight a big fighter. I, I think Holmes Norton was it for Norton. I think that fight took so much out of him that he was never the same again. And I think that's why you saw Shavers and Cooney beat him so badly. Well, he said that he never was the same again after the Ali third fight. But certainly uh, with Jimmy Young and, and Ken Norton, I mean um, Larry Holmes, uh, Norton seemed to give it everything he had. And you're right, those are very exhausting, grueling fights that are extremely close. Uh, he had to go through a lot of pain both physically and mentally. And I agree that after 
after Holmes. Uh, and Norton was aging. You know, he, uh, he kept he kept uh, he's like Jack Benny. He kept staying the same age at a certain point. He started out in his thirties, and he stayed in his thirties. Yeah, never but he looked so the, damn good. He could pull it off. He did. He did. In fact, that, that it may have been a little misleading to a certain degree because he does sort of look shot when he started taking these 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 last couple of fights and stuff. Though it's it's not clear he's shot, uh, but but uh, his hand speed's a little slower. But not, it does, it's not that obvious. Um, and then uh, Holmes and, and Young and Ali are also different fighters in general than Ken Norton. That uh, it's it's not quite obvious what's happening to Norton. But I do agree that Larry Holmes, the the, the entire fight, especially the 15th round. Uh, is very special, and uh, Holmes won a split decision, and um, I'm I'm okay about that too. Uh, it, it, you know, it's uh, uh, and then yeah, I kind of agree that that after that, I feel like I'm watching the decline now um, of Ken Norton. Though um, again, these things might have just a little bit of an oddball perspective because Norton's style itself is unusual, and then when he he really looks like he's a slugger versus a uh, versus boxers, but Norton was a boxer too. He's just a different kind of boxer. Um, so I think the Holmes one was his last, uh, whatever it was for greatness. Though uh, certainly Norton showed up for the next couple of years when he when he did fight, which wasn't very often. But he certainly looked in, in physical shape, and it didn't look like physical conditioning was the problem. Yeah, I think his body was just breaking down, and so I guess it was physical condition, but. The exterior looked like it was still a brand new car. The problem was the engine had yeah. a lot of miles on it. His <laughs> next big fight, yeah. His next big yeah, the carburetor, fight. The carburetor's busted. With yeah, Norton, I hear you. Early shavers, he fights shavers. Shavers and Norton are ranked one two. The winner is supposed to take on Larry Holmes, Holmes. because Holmes stopped Ozzy Ocasio, who, on the undercard of Holmes Norton, had upset. You know, Jimmy Young, he actually upset him, I think, a second time, too, in San Juan. And Holmes stopped Ocasio, but Holmes ends up fighting a rematch with Shavers instead of Norton as Shavers pretty much and, walked and, through him. And, 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 and think about it when you, when you, when you realize that the, the winner of Norton versus Shavers is going to take on Holmes when you think they each fought Holmes once, and Norton and Holmes won the greatest fights of all time, while when Shavers fought Holmes, Holmes won every round. Yeah, I but mean, you know what? Even though he won every round in that first fight, that's a hell of a fight still. It wasn't like he walked through Ernie Shavers. I would say that, too. I would say that for a guy that probably lost every round, it's not that bad a fight because you still sort of think at any moment <coughs> that something could happen. You know now, what I would compare it, it was... to? How about this? If you're, I'm sure you've seen Carlos Palomino against Roberto Duran. Mm-hmm. That's a hell of a fight, even though it's a shutout. And it's obvious who's winning and who's probably going to win. I mean, Palomino was such a great talent. It was just there's levels, and Roberto Duran's an all-time great. Carlos Palomino's just a great fighter. And I think that that was kind of the same thing here with Holmes and well, Shavers. I was, also, and, yeah. I, I was also thinking, you know, chasing back even farther in the past. And actually, there, there are reasons – not to compare it as far as you know the this and that, but I'll I'll use the comparison part I would like as Dempsey versus Tunney that uh that Tunney's really sort of dominated shut out Dempsey the whole the entire first fight and by the time they faced the second time around you're still thinking kind of any moment Demp you know Dempsey's gonna get it together and do something and Shaver's gonna get together and do something and in the second fights for both of them hey they did they both uh, Dempsey knocked down Tunney for the first time. Um, and uh, Shaver's knocked down a Holmes. And oh, so, and I've never seen. Yeah, there's anticipation. I've never seen anybody get hit like Holmes did and get up. Well, he, again, because I, 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 of watching these things, I'm watching Holmes. He got he got tagged by Ronaldo Snipes and put to the canvas. Mike Weaver knocked him down. Um, everybody's knocking down Larry Holmes. Yeah, but Holmes, Shaver's uh, and Weaver is understandable. Those are two but, of the hardest hitting heavyweights of all time. I think Snipes. You know, I think Holmes was kind of bored in that fight, but you know that. You know, Holmes, go ahead. I know what you mean. Good. Holmes was really struggling. By the time Shavers knocked him down, Holmes was struggling to finish out that round. Uh, he looked like he was in real trouble uh, if he didn't keep doing whatever he could to just get to, get to the end of the round, clear your head. Uh, Shavers had him in real trouble and tried to do what he could, but you know, Larry Holmes is an excellent, uh, just like Gene Tunney, excellent uh, defensive guy and, and, and knows how to move around the ring. A bicycle a little bit, but also just keep your opponent from landing a clean shot when they're going crazy trying to hit you, and then uh, get to the end of the round, clear your head, and uh, and do 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 much better the next round. 
So Kid Norton, I think, assumed that he was probably on the downslope, too, because then he just started fighting white guys. And he fought <laughs> Scott Ledoux, who that was a controversial draw, and he lost a split decision to Randall Cobb. Now, the one thing I could say in Norton's defense here, Cobb and Ledoux were both top ten heavyweights. Cobb had a lot of people thought beaten Dokes. Was that right before they fought Shavers, or was that after? Well, um, it's just a I, – I kind of – Passed through it too fast, but just to make sure everyone knows, Shavers did knock out Norton in the first round. That's why they got that that the well, rematch. Said, Scott Ledoux, two what are your favorite? Oh, yeah. And and I, Scott, Scott Ledoux is one of your favorites. It's a very interesting fight because uh, for seven rounds, Scott Ledoux doesn't win a round. He mean, and then he thumbs Norton. I don't think intentionally, and then starts beating the shit out of Norton. You know, in the tenth round, yeah, he, I don't think Norton, Norton doesn't know where he is, and it looks like it's a knockout. It's just at the bell. Uh, Norton's tangled into ropes. He can't get up, can't do anything. The fans are going crazy because it's Scott Ledoux territory. And um, somehow the referee said, no, I was I – was, the referee didn't know what he was calling, but he said it was the end of the fight, and they, they end up calling it a draw. So uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to throw all that in, and I missed uh, oh, the, what you asked about. Yeah. Well, it just um, about white guys so he could be more yeah, successful well, when he was on the downside. But he wasn't because he got a draw with Ledoux. And then him and Randall Tex Cobb was a hell of a fight too. Yeah, they're kind of the best uh, heavyweight fight of the year, and Cobb did not go down easily. He's a big guy, undefeated at the time. And, um, yeah, he was yeah, right number nine then. Right. Um, I, I suppose it's probably better for Norton at that point since it was Norton's last victory to take on a guy maybe a little bit slower in hand speed and stuff. But uh, they're, they're pounding away at each other, and uh, um, it, 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 at the moment – it appears it certainly helped Jerry Cooney. At the moment, it still looked like Norton maybe still has it. Maybe still, you know, is this, um, you know, maybe Ernie Shavers is just, you know, not not a smart idea to try to slug it out with them in the first round. And, and there's still hope that Norton is a – but not really. The way Scott Ledoe knocked him around and beat him up, I think you have to think. Um, Norton really ought to think about not doing this anymore, but he, but, but he, but, but he did. And anyway um, – they're still good fights, you know. I I sort of didn't want to. I don't think I watched the cop fight ever until for just for this because I thought, oh God, what a what a. I hate to watch, you know, Norton take on a fight like that and stuff like that. I'm kind of putting down Cobb more than I should. Yeah, but Cobb, Cobb wasn't, wasn't a bad fighter. A tough guy. Right, yeah. exactly. I was. I, that's what I mean. When I'm watching it again. I'm thinking, no, Cobb is a, is a better fighter than I'm giving him credit for. It was a good fight. Uh, a lot of punches, you know, thrown. Um, and and the only just, uh, thing for Norton is this is. Uh, a little bit later in his career for a guy not telling the truth about his age. Uh, Norton's taking a lot of hard shots for a guy who really was a better boxer earlier in his career, and now he wants to trade punches more and more. And um, I think that's a mistake, even though uh, he did win against uh, Cobb. and looked a little surprised he went against Cobb. He didn't look all that sure that he'd beaten him, but uh, it went his way. All right, now he still had a chance to get a rematch against Larry Holmes. He came in ranked in the top ten, fighting Jerry Cooney, who was ranked number two. Um, this was a fight that was fought at Madison Square Garden in front of a packed house, and it was over pretty much before it started. And Ken Norton, at the end, when interviewed in the dressing room, said this was kind of self-explanatory. He said, I did not expect Jerry to come out that quick. He hit harder and quicker than I thought he would. He was a lot more skilled than I thought he would. He surprised me with everything he did. I just didn't expect it. He's a very talented fighter. Right, and uh, and uh, it was a it was a sick one to have to watch because uh, Cooney is, knocks Norton out and pounds him pretty quickly in the first round, and then Norton somehow gets trapped or pinned against the ropes and can't seem to fall down. So Cooney he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's just yeah, it seemed like Tony Perez, the referee, just kind of froze. Yeah, it did. You know, absolutely. That's not Cooney's fault. You know, Cooney can't do anything until the referee stops the fight. And, that, and uh, you're right, the, the fight should have been stopped uh, at least. 10 and 15 seconds earlier before these, this, these this avalanche of pants punches against a guy who can't do anything except taking punches. And then it looks like the sad end of a career. But the thing is, as you're saying, it, it, it wasn't obvious at the moment. At the moment, it still looked like Norton was a contender possibly for, the, for a title fight opportunity. And only in retrospect, do you, after the Holmes fight, do you see, gosh, a first-round knockout against uh, Ernie Shavers. And then Cobb's kind of lost a little bit of his reputation to Scott Ledoux, uh, maybe not given as much credit as he deserves. And then the first-round knockout against Cooney, you think, ah, oh, Norton really shouldn't have fought those last three or four fights. Well, but those are still competitive fights Ledoux. against competitive guys. Struggling with Ledoux should have been a big tip-off. Because I like Scott Ledoux, but I know he wasn't that good. He was just a tough guy that could take some punches. Cobb, on the other hand, I think did have a little bit of skill. 
I think people just remember the Holmes fight. And I think that if you doubt if Cobb had any skill or not, go back and watch his first fight with Michael Dokes. Oh, yeah. You know, I think, again, the, the, the boxing is so unfortunate because – it, it, so much there's so much expectation to either your either your 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 champion or a bomb, and and it's unfortunate to put people in that sort of well. It's category. like the Michael um, Spinks thing. When we did Michael Spinks, people right. have a tendency to just remember that last fight. Yeah, and unfortunately, the 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 Norton one is is a sad way to go. But as you said. The, the Larry Holmes fight, whether people want to think it's for a title fight or not, it doesn't matter. It gives him a fight. Be, it gives him somebody besides Muhammad Ali that's great on the resume, still a lot of fun to watch, and uh, still in the top ten uh, um, best heavyweight fights, I would say best boxing matches in, in, in my heart. We always talk about um, yeah. Kali and uh, Holyfield one, and I would be one of them too. So I have two of the ten, and I don't know what the other eight would be, but I've never wavered about Norton Yeah, because Holmes. literally um, Holmes Norton, the 14th and 15th rounds could have been a Rocky movie if one of them would have been white. You're right. It could have been by a screenwriter because it's so dramatic. It's sort of, you know, it, this is this is – you know, Holmes at times doesn't look like he's quite putting in enough offense, but he's certainly so much better hand speed against Norton. When he decides to to score, he can do it sort of seemingly fairly easy. But but in the 15th round, it looks like Norton, you know Holmes is obviously saving his energy, but it looks like he's saving it a little too much because after two minutes of the three minutes, this is Ken Norton's round all the way, and Ken Norton's you know the the champion's got it, and all of a sudden like Holmes. You, you, you think he's going to have one last little flurry, and, and it is, and he tags in order, and he wobbles him, and, and it's still exciting to watch. And um, uh, just you know the way these things end, like uh, Ollie taking shavers out in the last 10 seconds, in the last 10 seconds it looks like Holmes has Norton's number, and the, the, the right winner, the right person won a very close split decision. Yeah, and anybody that thinks Joshua Klitschko is a great heavyweight title fight needs to go look up Holmes and Norton. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I do, I do, and and enjoy these fights. But yeah, I wouldn't put uh, the Joshua uh, Klitschko anywhere, anywhere in the oh, same no, category. Oh no, because Joshua Klitschko it's, was just dramatic because you had a couple knockdowns. It wasn't fifteen. Right, rounds Klitschko was like forty two or something. Forty. Right, yeah. one's 40, 42 or something. And these these are two guys that start to finish. Uh, uh, was a slugfest, and and the thing about Norton fights and then with Ollie fights, there was never a knockdown. Um, it, yes, of course, the the you know the battle royale when when the when each fighter knocks the other one down. Oh, of course, that's more exciting. Obviously, that you know that is. But uh, but no, uh, uh, Holmes and Norton has no knockdowns. But so um, that, that's still in the top ten. Um, uh, and just because it's just the uh, uh, crazy from start to finish. Young Norton is a great fight from start to finish, but it seems so tactical. Uh, it isn't quite as your blood is rushing uh, yeah. as much as it is with uh, Holmes and Norton. All right, Chris, what's going to be our next episode? Uh, well, I was thinking we were talking about uh, uh, Cowie. Or, um, we could possibly do him um, if you were interested. And, uh, um, or yeah. are you on to a Cowie? Because I, I think that would be Kauai. kind of fun. I remember all the Cowie stuff. I just watched him against Eddie Davis the other night. Well, I sort of like the, the – it's fun for me to get to rewatch these things because I like to sort of see the, the, the style again of all these guys. And, and at least with Norton, it was, it was fun to watch his style because I always think of Norton as, 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 again, an awkward guy. And it's really nice to watch Norton the boxer. So I'll be interested in seeing Cowie the boxer. I know he's a slugger, but I'll be interested to see his boxing a little bit more as I watch uh, these fights. Um, so that's going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to it. All right, Chris. We will be back here in a couple of weeks probably then with another old-time boxing show. I want to remind you, you can follow The Grueling Truth at Grueling Truth. If you want to read all of Christopher's articles, you can go to gruelingtruth.com and probably just go to the search bar and punch in Christopher Shelton. I want to remind everybody, you can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find The Grueling Truth. So for Christopher Shelton, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.